Hi guys, it's Abby. Welcome to today's video. I know today's video is a lot different from what I've done in the past, but I have a reason for it. One being, I don't think I have to have my recent teeth removed again. It's once in a lifetime experience. And two, when I heard I had to have eight of my teeth removed, I was so super, super nervous. And I watched all the YouTube videos, read all the comments, and it literally terrified me even more. There are still some other questions that I had in my head at the time, and I didn't see any videos talk about it. So today's videos, I'm going to cover everything. It's going to be long, and I'm gonna put the timestamp down below, either in the description box or in the comment section. If you're watching this video, you're probably about to have your wisdom teeth removed or maybe you have had it and you're still in the recovery process so i really really hope this video helped you guys but yeah let's get into the video before i had braces on my orthodontist asked me whether I want to remove my teeth first and have braces on or vice versa and I was like I wanted to know and be sure that I have braces on I don't want to have gaps for too long and I decided okay I will have braces on first and then I'll have my teeth removed that was a bad decision you will see why later on a month after I have my braces on I have set up appointment with the oral surgeon I believe it was Tuesday that was for consultation so I went in there so it was like 9 30 9 45 so I went in there like 30 minutes earlier and they had me filled out paperwork probably like 10 minutes before the actual appointment they brought me into the room I brought my husband with me to my husband actually followed me into the room too since it's just the consultation so we went into this room it's like a closed room and there's a chair in the middle, you know, the dentist chair and another chair for like just a regular chair on the side and there are computer right in the corner and there, there was like a, my x-ray on the wall. They put me on a chair and then they told me about what's going to happen, what to expect during the procedure, what to expect after and what's the risk that you might have in rare cases this, it might trigger the nerve and you might be numb for the rest of your life stuff like that but it's really rare but they just inform you what could happen and she had me read this stuff while waiting for the doctor to come in about the the sedative that they use there are three types i read that and what else did she give me the instructions that you have to follow after the surgery how to take care of it you just read that it's like um one or two papers and not long after the doctor came in and looked into the computer and lower my chair down and look at my teeth and then he asked me what teeth i wanted to remove probably just to confirm that the information that he has matches what i want and then he suggests right away that they gonna put me to sleep which i am so so glad i don't want to be numb and awake the whole time the procedure somebody yanking my teeth out i don't want to experience any of that i'm really glad he suggests that that went really quick and i had to set up my appointment at the front desk so yeah we went to the front desk has the appointment set up i picked the earliest appointment that available which is two weeks later on friday 12 45 which is not a good decision. I forgot that you have to, you can't drink or eat anything six hours prior to surgery, which means 12.45, I'll be hungry, I'll be thirsty. If you can, I recommend you pick the appointment early in the morning, which you wake up and you just go. I just want it done as soon as possible. I just wanted to get it over with. Then I asked her about the price. She gave me the estimated cost which was 2100 us dollars and she doesn't know whether the insurance will be cover any of it so yeah a week later they called me and they told me that the policy the insurance policy is that you have to be 31 year old under 31 year old they will cover the cost of the surgery i was 31 year old a few months ago and they gave me the option that they will confirm with the insurance company whether or not 
my surgery will recover they need to take like a month to confirm i don't know why i didn't want to wait another month i just wanted to get it over with i was ready at that point so i was like okay um let's do this i will pay whatever i have to pay because the company wouldn't cover 100 it's like 80 percent or something so i had to pay 510 and the rest whether or not they're going to pay it's okay just go with the surgery and then the rest i will pay out of pocket if they don't cover so yeah day of the surgery so yeah the day of the surgery the appointment is 12 45 right i i realize i can't drink i can't eat six hours prior i woke up at about 4 a.m. to have a coffee and ate something. That's how much I love coffee. I woke up at 4 a.m., sip a coffee, and wait and wait and wait. I could not eat, I could not drink. I went and then, so we went to the office with my husband. So you have to have someone with you to drive you to, and that person had to wait in the waiting room the vehicle had to be outside waiting for you. The person had to wait for you in the waiting room this whole process. When we walk in, we paid 510, give them the address, not the 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 local pharmacy that we prefer to go to because they're gonna prescribe the medications, right? We paid that, wait for like five minutes or so. No, probably 10 minutes. And they came and get me. I went in there just by myself and my husband wait in the waiting room. I went in there, in the room, it's similar to the room that I had the consultation. There's a chair and then the computer in the corner. And this time there's Michael Jackson playing in the background. <laughs> and yeah, they had me sit in the chair. The nurse, she put, she had this thing on my arm. Oh, and um, when I left the consultation and they gave me this paper, but I have it on the screen. It's like the thing that you should do or not do. It's basically you cannot drink or eat. You should not smoke before the surgery and um, you should not wear contact lenses. I wore glasses at the day of the surgery and no jewelry, but I actually wore this like um, necklaces, but they didn't mind that. No acrylic nails, no excessive makeup, and also wear short sleeves because they're gonna have all this white attached to you. She had me sit on a chair, and then she had this thing on my arms and the thing on my fingertips, and they has like other thing that on my chest, <laughs> like two on my chest and one on on my rib cage, and oxygen put into my nose. And also, then she, she stick the needles into my <laughs> right arm. Yeah, and she was like, okay, the doctor is on his way. And she began in five minutes and she left me in the room by myself. I was so nervous, but I kept cool. I just act like, yeah, it's fine. It's okay. I'm not nervous. That's how I act. But I was really nervous. But Michael Jackson is really helping. I think it was like one song and the doctor came in and he came in. He looked into the computer and asked me, so you want for premolar and for wisdom teeth removed, right? So you just confirm it. Got these needles in, in his hands. I can't see needles. I am so terrified of needles. I look away. I heard him saying, so we're just gonna put you to sleep. And that's all I heard. That's all I heard. I was out. I was out. I didn't hear him finish his sentence. First thing that I remember is that it was like a like a dream. You ever have a dream where you're like going through the corridors really fast, you can't control, you don't know if you're walking or floating or running, you don't know, you just feel like you're going through the corridors. There is noises echoing around, you can't make any out of it, you don't understand what the echo was, what the noise was, you just, you just hear it. I realized later that probably when they put me in a wheelchair and take me to another room but at the time I that how I felt at the time and then I didn't know where and how 
and was sitting in a chair in the room. I start to recognize things slowly. There was a person walking, there was a person next to me, <laughs> and there is this girl. I was so out of it. I wasn't. I wasn't fully awake. So I saw this girl. She was waving at me, and she went. I I just went back <laughs> like that. <laughs> it was so funny. I start to recognize more thing. I was sitting on a couch. Actually, I thought I was sitting in a on a wheelchair, but it was in a very comfortable couch. And I saw the nurse. I saw other people in their chairs, like just like me. I was looking at the nurse, and she was asking me how many of my head you see, and I said two. <laughs> It's so funny. Yeah, I I saw two of her heads. I swear, she was like, "Okay, I'm gonna go get your husband." Um, what's your husband's name? I was like, "Jesse." I don't know how she understand it, and she said she asked again, oh, "What? What's your husband's name?" Jesse. That's what I said. There are gases full in my mouth. I couldn't talk. My mouth was numb. I didn't realize that, but it was really hard to talk and funny. But I don't know how she understand it. But she went out to the other room to get my husband. To told my husband to pick me up, like in the front. It was like in the waiting room specifically for the people who had the surgery. She put me on a wheelchair, wheel me out to the car, help me get in the car, and I thank her. My husband got the prescription from the doctor, and on the way home, we went to the store to get or pharmacy to get my medications. But they said it it would take another hour, so yeah, you can't have your medicines right now. I was planning to take my medicines right away when I get home, but whatever. Went home, then helped me get on the couch and. I was sitting there for like 30 minutes, and he told me that the the instructions is that you have to keep your gauze in for 30 minutes, and then you can take them out. And I was confused. I saw a video saying you have to change it every 30 minutes. I was pretty confused, but instruction says okay, you have to take your gauze out in, uh, like after like 30 minutes. So I took my gauze out. And I was still bleeding, like a lot of blood, like blood everywhere. I took the gauze out, and I was like, "No, no, no! This is not going to be good." And I put the new gauze in. Once I put the gauze in, I was walking out of the bathroom, and it's just <laughs> I couldn't hold it. I had to vomit. I vomit and. Blood everywhere. There was nothing out of my stomach. It was just, it's just blood out of my mouth. I, it was disgusting. You know why? I had the braces on, and the blood stuck everywhere in the brackets, and it's so disgusting. It's sticky blood stuck into the brackets, every corner of my brackets. That's why. You should not have braces on before you have wisdom teeth removed because it's so disgusting and it's not easy to clean. So yeah, I vomit and it. I felt a lot better because I felt nauseous the whole time, and then I vomit. It felt good to vomit. Trust me, if you had to vomit, do it. It it will make you feel better. But it's disgusting. But it will make you feel better. So. My husband went to pick up medication, and I took one of the pain medicines. I didn't feel pain or anything. My mouth was still numb at the time. I think it wore off like uh, at six, maybe six, seven around that time. But even after that, I didn't feel pain at all. Okay, once I got home, first thing I did was I um had the. This is really important to you, okay? If you, if you have the surgery, if you have that many teeth removed, you really need this thing. It is a cold pack. I have this in the fridge. I have two of them, and um, just switch it up. What I did, it's just like there is no straps, right? Here is the resistance band that I don't use anymore. You work out in it, but you don't use it anymore. It's trash. 
so it's not really trash now because you can use it I just go like this and put it right here and there you go that's what I did I had it all the whole time this is like the first thing when I got home I had the um, cold pack on and the thing is you have to do it within the 24 hours they say that if you do it after like 24 hours, it won't affect anything. It's best that you do it right away and within 24 hours. And that what I did. And I switched up between the two, brush my teeth just very gently with the, you know, normal toothbrush. It still felt disgusting because my oral routine is like long, long. I have to do a lot of things. At the time, I could only like brush my teeth gently. But second day, like the first day, I brush my teeth and yeah I woke up with no pain and the first thing I did was continue to use the cold pack very important else there was no swelling at all I don't know if that the surgeon is that good or I do the cold pack I don't know which helps or maybe both but there was no swelling there was no chipmunk cheeks the second day the third day went by I took pain medicine once a day just because it was no pain or anything but I just took it just in case just to be safe you know the third day I decided to hit the gym it wasn't bad but the thing is um what's it called it's called dry socket I don't want to have that I heard that it's the most painful thing in the world so I don't want to have that dry socket what I do is when you swallow things, so you can, you should, you cannot use straw for like a week, but it, I end up not using straw for like three weeks, I believe, because I am so terrified of dry socket. And another thing that I noticed is that when I swallowed, it creates the suction in my mouth and I don't want to um, disturb the blood clot. So when I swallow with my mouth closed, it kind of creates this suction in my mouth when I swallowed, I swallowed with my mouth open like like that because I, I don't want to disturb those butt, butt cloth which is really important for you if you don't want to have dry socket. When I work out, it creates a lot of pressure in my mouth. It's hot but it, it's not it's bearable. If you figure out how to handle it, it, it will be fine. So that's what I did. I swallowed a lot and I drank a lot during the the um the workout but with no straw and it's kind of disgusting maybe maybe it's just me i don't know i don't know if other people do that but that's what i did it's just like swallow with my mouth open what else i ate um day before the surgery i already know it would be hard for me to eat so i made like a like a soup very soft soup like literally just put it very close to my throat and just focus on swallowing it I don't eat anything in pieces because i don't want to deal with the bit and pieces stuck in the holes in my mouth right and that's very important you guys you have to eat you have to eat your body needs to heal and it just needs nutrition that you have to eat just force myself to eat it was disgusting but i had to do it and yeah third day i work out and so the fourth day the person who wait for you in the waiting room, right? Um, they will, the, the staff will give them a some stuff, some instructions and stuff. One of the thing that they gave my husband is that wait, they gave me, they gave my husband the prescription and the gauze, and also this thing is the serene. It's really really important to you guys. If they don't give you this. You have to go buy it. You you have you need it. It's very important. So this thing actually came with. It says on the package, right? Use me on fourth day. So use this on the fourth day for seven days. I actually end up using for like two to three weeks because there is still holes in my mouth and the food stuck in there. And this thing just swish swish in my mouth won't help anything. It's still stuck in there. And then this thing you just like just and everything just gonna come out of those eight little holes that food stuck in there really good use it with 
the salt rinse you literally just mix warmed water with salt and use this thing yeah that's how I clean my mouth also on the third day I decided to use my electric toothbrush I actually don't recommend but I felt so disgusting because my mouth is like you know brackets and it's hard to clean and regular toothbrush just doesn't help much so I I feel I feel like it's not as clean as I want to so I decided to use electric toothbrush and it's actually pretty helpful I think because like it it's easy to get into the target area and you cannot touch the um, what's called extraction site so I just like focus on each individual teeth with those with that electric toothbrush but that's not for everyone because it creates the vibrating but I felt disgusting I had to use it I also had to cover first week first week, there was no pain at all what I was very scared of is the dry socket I tried every way everything that I could avoid not to create dry sockets not using straw the swallow thing <laughs> actually there's one thing <sighs> I can't focus I I'm sorry if it's all over the place but yeah at the day of the surgery they gave my husband the available appointment on seven days after um, the surgery just for me to go check in if I had like the pain the uncommon unusual pain that I have after the surgery or if I don't have any I just call them to let them know yeah I'm fine I don't need to go back a week went by I didn't have any pain I still work out and everything still felt really good but the butt cloth was so thin and I was so terrified that I would get dry sockets I keep reading doing my research is this dry socket but as far there was no pain there was just like the butt cloth it's just really really thin and a week went by I still used the serene still wash my mouth very gently this thing is good to use but you cannot just go like really harsh on it just be very gentle with it you don't want to flush those blood clots out two weeks went by the week three I still I still use it once in like in two days like the day that I eat and I felt like some stuff is stuck in the holes in my mouth three weeks passed the thing the gum start to fill the up <laughs> well, maybe a little bit longer than a month went by everything was good no dry socket no any unusual pain and then I received a bill from the office so they sent me this bill it turns out that the insurance company actually covered most of the cost so did I tell you I paid 510 the day of the surgery I paid 510 that day and then the rest of the amount that I have to pay is that 76 and 84 cents that is like the rest that I have to pay so I paid all together 586 and 84 cent the insurance company covered the rest that was a relief I had my teeth removed and everything went so well um, the insurance actually covered like the rest of the thing I didn't have to pay 2,000 and how much was it 2,000 and 100 US dollars overall it wasn't the most pleasant experience but it was okay it was bearable I really hope I cover everything. I really, I, I'm sorry I couldn't find those instructions that they gave me. I don't know. I thought I kept it somewhere, but I couldn't find it. If anything you want to know, please leave a comment down below. Let me know your experience, any questions you may have. I really hope this video is helpful. I know I'm not the best talker, most fluent talker. I'm trying to cover everything that I've experienced and I really hope this video helped you guys. I know it's terrifying when you hear like, oh, you gotta have your eight of your teeth removed at once. But it really was terrifying to me. But it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. There was no pain. I still work out and I was a little bit, maybe a lot paranoid, but that was about it.
subscribe to my channel if you like this video if you enjoy my content please do i really really appreciate all of you but i really hope it's helpful to you guys so i'll see you guys in my next videos enjoy the rest of your day bye